David Brewster here with New Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is Building Better Bending. And this episode's going to revolve around a couple bending phrases that I've been recording for my new project. And after, you know, kind of laying these parts down and working on it, I realized I hadn't played anything like this since I was a teenager, like back when I first started playing guitar. And I was really working and focusing on bending. And I remember as a kid sitting there in my room, just playing the same licks and phrases and bends over and over and over. And I honestly hadn't done that in a very long time. And I sat right here in my studio, you know, laying this part down. And after it was over, I looked at my fingers, which were all dented up, and I was listening to the track. And I was also noticing, like, how my hand felt. My hand felt like Superman, you know, after I was done with this. Really, when you think about it, string bending is one of the most demanding things that you do on the guitar. I mean, even more so than shredding and, you know, playing something really fast or stretchy. Because when you're bending strings, you're physically pushing the string to another pitch, right? And that's very demanding. So to properly and accurately, you know, perform string bending on the guitar, you definitely need strength, control, and precision in your fret hand. And that's basically what this episode is going to tackle, you know, head on. So here we go. So the section of the song we're going to be looking at in this episode actually came from my new song, Gar, which is from my latest instrumental project that I'm currently recording right now called Nilbog, which is a tribute to the band Goblin. And I discussed that in length in the previous episode, the Goblin album. But now I'm actually sharing something I uncovered, you know, during the recording sessions for this project. And basically the song has this two chord progression that's really mysterious and finger picked. And there's a series of bends that kind of move along with it and it creates this melodic motif, and then the chord progression kind of changes, and then the bends kind of change, and it goes from single note bending to unison bending. And like I mentioned you know, during the intro, I hadn't really sat here and just played, you know, bending, you know, for 10, 15 minutes, just over and over and over and over. I think when I laid this down, I wrote the part and then recorded it, and that took about 10 or 15 minutes to kind of flesh it out, record it, and finish it. And that's when I noticed, like, oh, wow, you know, my fret hand kind of woke up and I realized, like, oh, I've neglected this part of my bending and playing for a long time. So just a heads up, but Gar is George Romero's initials, George A. Romero, Gar. And I'm a huge George Romero fan. Of course, uh, Goblin, you know, supplied the soundtrack for George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Also the uh, Argento, you know, directed cut. Uh, zombie, you know, over in Italy, but uh, basically what, the other night when I recorded this, I basically stopped playing and I looked at my fret hand fingers, like my fingertips, and I started laughing because I hadn't seen my fingertips look like this since I was a kid. So I grabbed my camera and took a picture, but here's what my fingertips look like after playing through this part. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, but this is a rant video technically. So I am discussing kind of what this is, where it came from, and now I'm actually going to play a clip so you can actually hear what this sounds like as far as what I recorded. That way you can kind of get it in your head. And I'm going to show basically the clean guitar part that's finger picked, and then obviously this bending workout too. So here's a clip of this little section of the song Gar.
So there's a little clip feature in this song so you could hear what this sounds like. And then the finger picked, like kind of clean guitar part in the background is doing this. So it's basically E minor and then E minor flat five. I'm just changing that B to B flat right there. Right? So that's the only thing changing between those two chords is that B to B flat. And then with the bending part, um, I'm gonna loop this with the MXR clone looper to demonstrate it here. But uh, the bending part, I'm basically grabbing this A, bending that to B over that E minor. And then when it changes to E minor flat 5, then I'm bending that A to B flat. So I'm going from a whole step to a half step, like this. <laughs> And it takes a certain amount of control. You're also listening very closely, like, am I going a whole step or am I going a half step? And it's precise bending, right? Like that, but you're bending it, right? And that's really hard to do. And then against the chords, obviously, it sounds like this. actually deceptively hard to play because we're doing precise bending that A up to that B and then you know that A up to B flat right there and it's bent obviously I'm not you know fretting it like that but that's the melody basically I'm doing right there and that's really deceptively hard to do Especially if you continue doing it for like three or four minutes or whatever, that's really demanding and definitely will chew up your fingertips too. But the main thing you're really, you know, wanting to target and pinpoint there is you're bending exactly to B and then bending exactly to B flat. And that's hard to do. Definitely takes strength, control, and precision to do that. Now that was the single note bend, and then when the chord changes, and then it, basically the bends change from single notes to unison bends, and that's this next section right now, and then it continues, there's more bending like that. And the, the change, I'm basically doing like a C6 right here. And then a C sharp minor uh, flat six. You know, something like that. Basically, you know, the, the finger pick chord pattern, and then there's unison bends played along with that, and this is equally as tricky because now I'm basically bending a B flat uh, unison bend up to C, and then this B unison bend is bent up to C sharp, like that, and then so it's just those two unison bends back and forth, you know, B flat bent a whole step to a unison which is creating a C, and then that B unison bent a whole step is creating that C sharp. And then with the chords,
that's actually deceptively hard to do. Once again, it's really simple. It's just two bent, you know, unison bends back and forth. But it's that repetition and making sure you're bending in tune. You know, make sure that bend is you know correct, and then go up a half step and do it again, and really pay attention. Like, am I playing that you know perfectly in, in tune? That's really hard to do. Because you're building strength, muscle memory, you know, you're building control over that bend. And, you know, definitely it's, it's you know, really simple, but also very demanding on your fret hand and technique, too. That's going to wrap this episode of Brewster's Millions of Rants with this look at building better bending. And I'm basically sharing this because I just uncovered and recorded this a few nights ago. And I thought, you know what, this really kind of opened my eyes and reminded me of some things that I hadn't practiced in a long time including unison bends, because basically I don't really use those that often unless I'm playing some Hendrix or Led Zeppelin or, you know, Ace Freely Licks or something like that, maybe some Tool. But uh, it's not something I commonly play, but then with the Goblin music I'm recording and writing for this project, you know, those unison bends appear in Goblin's music, so I started incorporating them in, in my music. And then when I, you know, tapped into that, I thought, man, that's actually a really good deceptive workout because you're just basically playing two bent notes with that single bend and then two, you know, unison bend uh, moves too. And uh, you could basically take this idea and apply it to anything. Take a Hendrix lick, Stevie Ray Vaughan lick. It could be Albert King or Van Halen or David Gilmour or whoever. Um, but, you know, basically something to think about. You know, take a, you know, really basic move and just drill it over and over and over. Play it for 10 minutes. And although you might be bored sitting there playing the same thing for 10 minutes, when you're done, notice how things feel. Notice like when you go back to bend a note, it's gonna sound more controlled and better, hopefully, than ever before. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Nailed Lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.